Exercise three, I want to talk to you about what happens when we're looking at ninth chords or even beyond that, elevenths or thirteenths or whatever crazy chords you might come across. And just simply how to understand that. It all comes back again to that major scale. Each scale step gets a number, all right? If I play one octave of a C major scale, and this time I'm going to be way up here at the eighth fret, one octave, start on C, C, D, E, F, G, A, B, and C. And we remember those numbers would be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. And my C is 1 again, all right? I didn't get to 9, did I? If I continue into a second octave of this scale pattern, the next note, D, is my ninth. Now, earlier we said D was the second in this key. Well, but it's an octave plus away from our original root note of C. If it's more than an octave away, we don't call it the second, we call it the ninth, okay? And so you can imagine a ninth chord has that note in it, all right? If I continue up the scale, there's some notes that retain their number name pretty much no matter which octave they're played in. The third is pretty much almost always called the third. The fourth can either be referred to as the fourth or the eleventh. The fifth is always the fifth. It doesn't matter which octave it's in. The sixth of a scale can either be referred to as the sixth or the thirteenth. The seventh is always the seventh. Okay? So really it's the ninth, eleventh, and thirteenth that are affected by this. Okay? Okay, so let's examine a, a ninth chord, a C9 chord. Here is a very, very common shape of C chord. It's a little tricky to play. Maybe you know it. I've got my second finger, first finger, and then I've got my third finger barring across the top three strings. Okay? If I look at what notes these are, I've got C, which is my root note, E, which is my third, B flat, which is the flat seventh, D, a whole octave plus away from the original root note, so that makes it a ninth. And then I've got a G, a fifth note on top of that. All right? There's how a ninth chord might typically work. All right? Okay, now I'm going to show you a common thirteenth chord. All right? Common, I guess, if you play jazz and stuff, or swing, or some kind of bluesy stuff. Very cool sounding chord. Western swing, country stuff works with this. I'm basically playing a C bar chord here. But I'm going to take my pinky and move it all the way over to the second string, okay? And it's lined up on the same fret as my third finger, okay? And that note is my sixth, or thirteenth in this case. It's an octave plus above the C chord. So in this chord, I have my root note C, I have a G, I have a flat seventh, B flat, I have the third, which is E, and then over here, I have my thirteenth, in this case, the note A. And then over here that last note is C again. Okay? So more importantly though, not this chord or this chord shape, but that you just understand how the scale steps lead to the chord names. Anytime you see a, a songbook with a chord and it's got something funny in it like C7 sharp 9, you need to figure that chord out in relation to those scale steps. And once you start getting good at doing that, you'll just really improve your playing a whole lot. So think it through. Read through these things. Think them through. Start applying them to your guitar, all right?